What's up guys, Lindell back again with another episode of Lindell Brooks Aquaponics. Now today is a very special episode, right? I've been looking forward to doing this video for some time for you all now. And this video is about me building a home system for my girlfriend, like a small system. But I'm going to show you step by step how to build it. I'm going to explain the parts, tell you what exactly you, sh you could use to build this exact system. I did not do this episode before because I wanted you all to actually understand how aquaponics works and what's it about and so on before but now I'm going to do this show you all what it is guys keep watching okay guys by rights you know if I'm coming in Trinidad to build an aquaponics system small as I said for my girlfriend where else would I go but by Big Brother Sean's place as you can see in the back see the rabbits I had to come by Big Brother Sean to do it. YouTube, right? what's up? It's your boy Sean here again, and it's another Trinidad and Tobago collaboration. We told you guys we'd be back with more, and that's exactly what we're going to do today. Look out for it, guys. I tell, I'm telling you, this is one that you would love to see because you could go and try this for yourself. We're going to explain everything. Keep watching, guys. Okay guys, your material list for today. First thing, IBC tank. As I said before, make sure that your IBC tank is food grade, is a food grade IBC tank. You don't want any poison in that. The next thing, very important, uh, paint. Now these are to paint the IBC tank. You want a white um, paint and a black paint. I will explain why later on. And I recommend using oil paint because the water paint actually flakes off of plastic very easily. All right. Next, we have paintbrush. Two paintbrush, one for the white paint, one for the black paint. Then I have some bends. Two three-quarter um, 90 degree bends. I have about six half inch. 90 degree bends also. Two half inch ball valve. One screw union half inch. Two three quarter male adapters. One end cap for the bell siphon. Oop. Some half inch clamps. We don't need any clamps for the three quarter because that just, as you'll see, it's just gonna hang off the tank one color this color is a um, one inch color and then i have a three quarter to one inch reducer right one half inch t your pvc glue and then some tech point screws some self-tread tech point screws that could screw into this the ibc the metal right just a few uh, you could probably count how much I use after the video is when it's out. I also have a small piece of 4 inch pipe to use as my gravel guard. A short piece, maybe like the length of this is, this is probably like a quarter length, uh, about 4 feet. Yeah, this is about 4 feet in length, 3 quarter pipe. Also 4 feet in length, half inch pipe. You don't need much pipe at all for this job. That's about it for the materials. While I'm using the tools, I'll show you what tools I use. And it's not gonna be much tools either. Okay guys, keep watching. Okay guys, so this aquaponics system is what we call a chop flip system using the IBC tank. So the first thing you wanna do is ensure that you clean, clean out your IBC tanks. Make sure and run a hose through it. Make sure and clean out whatever substance inside it because sometimes it could be a bit smelly and when you start cutting and so on, you might get that scent. So run the hose through it, open it out, make sure that the tank is empty because it will be a whole lot easier to work with and lighter to work with, right? So make sure and clean it out. <laughs> so what we're going to do now is mark out exactly where we're going to cut on the IBC tank, to cut and flip. Because what we're going to do, we're going to make the fish tank and the plant bed 
from this one tank, right? So where I want, where I'm gonna mark first is count one, two, on this second horizontal piece of metal here. You want to put your first mark below this point, not above, below this point, because I want the distance from the top to at this point for my plant bed. If I cut on top here, it will be a bit less gravel that it's holding, a bit less volume. So I'm putting my mark below. And I'm gonna run this marker line right around the tank. So just keep going. The next cut that we're going to make is above the third horizontal piece of steel coming across here. So above this, this will be the fish tank, all the volume below here. So I'm gonna mark this again. Right, that's it for now. The next step is to remove the tank. And in order to remove the tank, we have to, let me show you. We have to cut these two pieces of steel out. All right, we're gonna remove that. Either cut or you could screw it off, but we don't have this tool right now. So we're gonna cut it out with the hand grinder. Now we're going to remove the tank from the cage. One of the easiest ways to do this, I mean, if you're, if you're trying it by yourself, if it's Sean and I, we could probably lift it out. But one of the easiest ways to do this is to just tilt the whole IBC tank on the side and slide it out. That's what we're gonna do now. Let we lift it back so first. Right, now you can clearly see the lines that we put to do the cutting. So now that that's out of the way, we're going to get to the cutting of the IBC tank. So how I usually cut the IBC tanks, right? Is by following the lines, but while you're cutting, you're leaving each corner connected. So you're only cutting the straight lines for now, and you cut these corners last. Why? Because if you, you're cutting on this line, and then you turn the corner, you come around here and you're still cutting, the tank tends to start closing in on each other and squeezing the blade, whatever blade you're using. It could be a hacksaw blade, it could be a stall saw, grinder, whatever. The tank tends to try to close in and squeeze the blade and makes it a whole lot difficult for you to cut the IBC tank. So cut every single line coming around, but just leave the ends, cut the ends last. It'll be a whole lot easier for you when you're trying to cut your tank. Let's go. Okay guys, so now that we have all the sides cut, and as I told you before, we left the corners, now we're going to cut all the corners off. And an easy way to do this, because if we try to cut it like this, then the top will fall into the bottom one. So the easiest way to do this is by actually turning the whole tank sideways, and then cut them off this way. So if you, once you have assistance, then you could have somebody hold one end by pulling it away and someone hold the next end and pull it apart. It's better to try to pull them apart so that they don't close and squeeze the blade of your grinder, your chop saw, whatever the case might be. So, let's go. You go ahead. So now we have the fish tank, the grow bed, and this, this is the extra piece that, now, most people might say, you know, you wanna throw this away, but, my neighbor gave me a good idea when it comes to this piece. You could take it, rest it on the ground like this, fill it up with dirt and put plants in it. So we always try to recycle everything that we use. So instead of going to throw this away, use it and make a plant bed with it, right? But in this case, we don't need this right now. So we're going to get rid of this. Here, go ahead. What you could do is just as you see Sean doing, take a knife or some material and just the edges. That's right. Yes. 
So now we're all set up and ready for painting. Well, actually, no. We're going to clean the surface of the tanks first and prepare it for painting. But we're all set up, set on the blocks um, off the ground so it's kind of easy on the back. So how are we going to paint the IBC tanks, right? First, we're going to use a black paint. The reason for the black paint is, remember in my last video, I spoke about algae in the system. So these IBC tanks are basically transparent when it comes to sunlight. Sun does pass through this and will shine on the content side inside, will shine on the nutrient filled water. So what you want to put the black paint for is for it to darken the surface of this plastic so that the sunlight will not pass through. And so we're using the black paint first. The next paint we're going to use is the white paint. So the black paint causes the sunlight not to pass through. And then the white paint causes the sunlight, it reflects the sunlight, right? Because if we leave the black paint on the surface just like that, it will create a lot of heat because black absorbs heat. So it will create a lot of heat in the fish tank. And then we're going to use the white paint to reflect the sunlight. So we want cool water inside there for the fish tank to keep the fish happy. That's it. Okay guys, when you're painting, it's not necessary that you have to paint the whole tank. You're painting the sides. Uh, what I normally do is, remember this is the bottom of the tank. This is the bottom of the fish tank, that is the bottom of the plant bed. The sunlight is not going to shine here because this actually turns over and rests back into the cage. So you don't have to plant here. I usually go about four inches in from the edge. So like, let's say, coming a bit like one wipe like that. And that's it. This way, I am all here doesn't necessarily, you don't necessarily have to paint it because that's going to rest in the drum and even with the grow bed, that will be the underside of the grow bed. The sunlight is not going to shine there. So guys, we're gonna try and paint this as quick as possible and we'll get back to you after the painting is done. Nice. Okay guys, so we're finished painting the black paint and uh, now we're going to paint the white paint. Now, just remember, the black paint always goes first. You can't do it the other way because if you put the black paint last, then the sun will shine on the barrel and this, the black paint will absorb the heat and keep the water in the fish tank warm. So the black always goes first, then the white after. Time to paint the white paint. Something I forgot to mention is that when you're painting the tanks, you want to ensure that you flip the tanks over. Don't paint it leaving the open side on top. Why? Because we don't want the paint getting anywhere inside the tanks. We want the tanks to dry and any excess paint must drip and fall to the ground or fall not nowhere inside the containers, right? So if you notice, both containers are flipped over so that the paint would not get inside. And by the time we do turn them over, it will already be dry, good to go. So, white paint time. Hi guys, I'm here to assist with Lendel, which is aquaponics um, system and his YouTube channel. Uh, the weather isn't conducive to our painting right now, so what we intend to do is we just put a base coat on it and uh, that base coat is going, to, is going to dry and tomorrow please God will continue with the full painting of the system and that will bring it in into a more smooth and, and look at a better finish for us to continue. Thank you.